I'm here in the administrative headquarters of the Guardian Angels in Canarsie, and I'm talking to our most recent graduate, Ivan Cruz, better known as Blue Blood, age 16, who has just uh, entered the formal ranks of the Guardian Angels. And uh, Ivan, uh, give us a little bit of an idea of what you're doing now. You're going to school? I'm currently in high school. I'm a junior. I also do another program called the Law Enforcement Explorer Program with the Amtrak Police Department. And what attracted you to the Guardian Angels? Uh, to get closer to law enforcement, to give back to the community, uh, just to help people who are in need. And did you come to the organization, or did you approach someone, or did a, someone approach you? How, how were you formally recruited? Well, I had a friend who wanted to join, and he did a little bit of research about it. And uh, one day going to school on the L train, I saw a flyer, and it had guardian angels on it. And I saw the number. I'm like, uh, did my friend want to join? So just before I got off the train, I took down the number. And when I saw him after school, I gave him the number. And he called. He did it for about two months, and he told me what the organization was about. So I said, okay. Uh, Go ahead and count me and get me an application. I want to sign up. This is what I want to do. Ah, so you see it was a flyer left on a subway. It's obviously some guardian angel put up. Uh, he had no idea that it would lead to Blue Blood getting that flyer and having a friend call and going through that long process. So no flyer uh, is a waste of your time in putting up because eventually it might lead to a, a Blue Blood in your community, in your area. Now, where are you living now? Uh, I currently live in Bushwick uh, in a uh, family homeless shelter. Now what is that like being a guardian angel when you're surrounded by a lot of folks in there who probably are not pro-guardian angel? Well, the people in the build in my building, are they do not like anything that has to do with law enforcement. Uh, at first, a lot of people would look at me and they would think I was a wannabe and, you know, I was wasting my time. Uh, a lot of threats, uh, in the middle of the night banging on my door. Uh, so it was a lot of hatred at first, uh, but then eventually, you know, they, they just stopped bothering. They, I let them be, they let me be, and it was just, you know. Now when they came and started banging on your door, that affects your whole family. What was their reaction uh, to you in terms of you continuing to be a guardian angel? Well, my mother, she was mad, you know, she said, why don't I just leave the organization, you know, stop doing what I want to do. And I told her, Ma, this is my dream, and a couple of kids aren't going to stop me from doing that. This is what I want to do with my life, and I'm going to continue to do it. And she supported me 100%. Wow, that's great. Now, well, where did you live before you and your family were placed in that homeless shelter, family homeless shelter in Bushwick? Well, I still lived in the same area, Bushwick, uh, but the neighborhood, the area that I lived in was completely, you know, drug-related, gang-related. NYPD would be doing raids every other day because of the drug dealings that happened out of the next door building, uh, constant shootouts for the gangs, you know. Uh, two bullets went through my window one night and a uh, few inches away from hitting me. Mm -hmm. Luckily, uh, I didn't get hit at all. So how did you avoid getting involved in that negative activity, or at least influenced by that? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang out outside. I would stay inside, you know, in fear that if I was outside and one of those cars passed by and started shooting, that I would get hit by one of those bullets. What happened to a lot of the young men and young women who grew up with you, who were in your age range, who were subjected to that? Well, now they're in gangs, using drugs, selling drugs, you know, experimenting with new drugs, mm -hmm. you know, that have come out, mm -hmm. such as K2, things like that. Now, when you go to high school, obviously you got a lot of different young people going, your age group, and they find out you're a guardian angel, what is their general response? Well, a lot of them, uh, they think that we're, that, I, uh, that I'm some sort of police officer or, or something like that. So it's really a lot of hatred and things like that, uh, a lot of threats. Uh, I've almost been stabbed uh, a number of occasions. Uh, kids would follow me after school, mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, what is it like uh, when you first try to explain who the guardian angels are? Because I would think a lot of people in your age range, 16, 
don't really know much about it. No, they don't. Uh, you try to explain it to them, and they think, uh, shut up, you pig, or you op, which is a uh, code word for a police officer or a cop. Mm -hmm. You know, they just didn't want to hear it. They just knew that what you did was similar to what a police officer does, so they don't want to have nothing to do with you. So you see, uh, obviously Blue Blood, a.k.a. Ivan Cruz, has gone through a lot to be a guardian angel, and he's stuck with it. I know there are Ivan Cruises in your communities, your neighborhoods, your neck of the woods where you have chapters. You have to go out and find them. you got to get them involved because it's going to be very hard for them to find you, particularly when they're in the age level of Ivan, who's 16. Most don't know who we are. They don't have a fathom in terms of what we do, and it's up to us to go out and get them, get them involved, keep them safe and secure so that they can be part of our future. Thanks.